Hey guys, and welcome back to the very last part of Make Your Own Minecraft Animation. Andrew here. And uh, this is where we left off. We've just finished setting up the lights, and uh, we've just been doing a few renders, and it's looking pretty good. But we just have a few, f a few things still to fix up, and we're going to get started on that right away. So first of all, um, I want to make the transition from the water to the sky a bit better. So as you can see right now, it just ends blue to white. So I'm going to try and add these further away parts of the ocean uh, as a white color. So what I'm going to do is uh, zoom out here a little, select my ocean plane, and I'm going to click on the water shader again in the attribute editor. I'm going to follow through the color, and down here where the color gain is, this is what controls the overall color of our water. I'm going to uh, create my own connection here, and again, it's going to be a ramp. I'm going to set this to a... Uh, a circular ramp this time. Okay. Going to get rid of the green part. And in the middle, I'm going to set that to the color we had before, something about that. And the color at the top, I actually want to set this to the color of the horizon. And so I'm going to open up my little render window, and I'm going to open up the color, and I'm going to choose the eyedropper tool to sample a color from this render. There we go. So now we should see, yep, it's blue in the middle and it falls off to white on the outside. We can take a quick render of this to see how it looks. There we go, and it's looking a lot better. Uh, we might even be tempted just to pull that in a little bit more. And we can take another quick render of that. Very nice, I'm just going to pull that in one last little bit and I'll leave it there. Okay. So the next thing that I wanted to do, just again with this water shader really quickly, is we want to have a bit of an animated ripple going through here. So again, clicking on my water plane, and the water shader, uh, we're going to follow the color again through to our actual water node. And we're going to make a few changes here. First of all, I want to change the, uh, the frequency, here we go, to 150. Nice. And I also, now, I want to play around with this wave time expression. And what this is actually controlling is um, how the waves are moving through the animation. So what we're going to do is a little expression here. So don't get freaked out. It's going to be very simple, and it's just based on the current time. So to do this, we're going to right-click on the wave time, and then we're going to select Create New Expression. The Expression Editor pops up. And uh, this first box is actually the attribute we want to affect. So we're going to do... Um, I'm just going to hit Control c to copy that, paste it down in the expression box, and we're just going to write equals time divided by 200. Whoops. There we go. <laughs> and um, we can just close that with a colon. Now, uh, if you're doing this in Cinema 4D, you'd use uh, Expresso, and I'm sure there's a very similar tool in Blender as well. Okay, so we'll just hit Create. And now what we should see is if we scrub through to different points in the time that our texture is updating. Very nice. Okay, the next thing I want to do is um, set up a little camera move. So I'm going to go into the Create menu set and I'm going to find a NURPS primitive to create a circle. That's going to be very small in here, so pressing the R key for scale on the keyboard. And I'm going to scale it up to about that size. Uh, again, this is, I'm just uh, putting in rough numbers here. And I'm going to press W again to access my move tool. Move that down a little bit, and we can adjust this in a second. From here, I'm going to go back to create, and I'm going to select cameras and just create a basic camera. Just like before, it's a little bit small. I'm going to scale that up. The scale really doesn't matter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this camera, and I'm going to shift select this circle. And what I want to do is constrain the camera to the circle. So all I have to do is go to the Animate. Uh, that's under Animation, drop down, or F2 on the keyboard. Animate, and then Motion Paths. Attach to Motion Path. And you can see now, as we scrub through the timeline, our camera is attached to this circle. And it spins around. Very nice. If we want to see how this looks, we can go to Panels, Perspective, and we can actually change this to Camera 1. And now if we play through this animation, you can see the camera flies around our scene here. Looking good. And uh, what I might do now is uh, I'll just come into the, uh, the motion path over here. 
and you can see this red box is the keyframed value and uh, I'm going to right click on this and have a look at the uh, the values where the keys are. So you can see that times 1 the value is 0 which means the camera is at the starting position and at frame 150 the value is 1 which means it's at its end position. So what I might do is at time 1 I'll set a key halfway through and then at time I might go 100, we'll set that at 1. So now when I play this animation through, it starts at the back of the island, swings around, and then finishes up in the front here. Lovely. I might just change this value to something like... Um, actually, no, I'll leave that how it is. Now, we can't actually see all of our scene in here, so I'm going to select this circle, and I'm going to just move it up a little bit. probably about there and then I'm going to scale it up just so you get the whole scene in the view very nice and we can play through this again and we can see our scene popping up right there looking really good uh, I'm going to take a quick render of this to see how it looks from this view looking really good I'm pretty happy with how this is turning out so far I'm just going to take a quick render from the back to make sure everything's okay again just clicking that clapperboard button and you can see we have those nice blue shadows at the back here on the sand. Fantastic. That's looking really good and I'm excited about where this is going. Uh, what I might do is I'm just going to take this water plane and scale it up a little more. It's a little too small for my liking. Re-render that. Awesome. Okay, so I think we're now at the stage where we are uh, ready to actually render this out and uh, create our little animation. So in summary, let's have a look at what we've achieved. Nice. So we have separated our mesh, we've extracted our geometry, we've actually animated each of these subgroups, both with a simple scale and a more complex bend. We've created a fire particle system down here, we've added in our directional sunlight, and we've created a few materials for the water and the sky here, and this is the final render that we are looking at at the moment. So the stage we have we are up to now is to take um, what we've created in the computer and now turn it into a series of images which will later on make up our movie. So what I'm going to talk about now is render settings. So we're going to jump back into the render settings menu just next to the clapperboard here. Okay. And in the common tab, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. And uh, here you can see width and height. That's of the image. I'm going to set this to... 720p, which is 1280 by 720. Okay, and I'm going to scroll up to the top again, and I'm going to change the image format from a Maya if to a Targa. And now a Targa is a really nice um, compromise between quality and file size, and um, I use it all the time, almost exclusively for my animations. And we'll change this to uh, we'll just go name dot extension. Uh, sorry, name number dot extension. All right. And underneath here we have the frame range. The start frame is one. The end is of course one hundred and fifty. And the camera that we want to render is called camera one. That new camera that we created. Okay, I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. Jump back to this indirect lighting tab. Final gather still on. It's all still there, still looking good. Okay, and now I'm going to take another render which is going to give us our production sized output image. And uh, while that's um, thinking, I'm actually going to talk really quickly about what happens from here. Maya doesn't exactly like rendering out our animation just as a video file. It much prefers to render out what we've created as a series of images and then usually we will stitch together those images again in some sort of post program like After Effects, Final Cut or any other program that is capable of um, basic video editing tasks. So you can see there, uh, let me just scale this window up a little bit. That's our actual size of the render. Looking pretty good. Everything's in the frame of the camera. And uh, you can see uh, we've got a nice fire glow there. Didn't actually need to adjust that in the end. And all our textures are looking quite schmick. And I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. 
Um, what you'll notice down here is it says render time 25 seconds. So even to just produce this simple image, this has taken 25 seconds to render. And we don't have very much going on here. So uh, if anything, I hope you can appreciate how long it takes to render some of these big scenes that have well over a million polygons and, you know, animation upon animation. So, uh, you know, your computer might be faster than this, it might be slower, depending on what kind of hardware you're running. Alright, so, the last step we have to do to render this out is we're going to go to File and Set Project. And what this is going to do is we're just going to set the default project for our images to be rendered out. I'm just going to select the Island Animation folder and hit Set. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do is just go back into that Set Project option. I'm um, just going to open up this uh, animation uh, folder and I've created another folder called Images. Uh, lowercase, all lowercase, just Images and uh, that's inside. So Island Animation, set that as our project and now all that's left to do is go to the rendering drop down. Again, that is F6 on the keyboard and under the render menu we have the batch render icon. And we're just going to click the option box. Um, that's all looking good. And then all we have to do from here is batch render and close. Once that's finished, I'll see you soon. Okay, welcome back. That took me just on half an hour. And I'm um, just here in Adobe After Effects. Um, you can use really any program that you want for this. Um, but I'm just going to show you how to do it in After Effects. So uh, just open up your Images folder and you have a, uh, a whole series of these images that we've just rendered out. And what I'm going to do is select the first one and make sure this uh, checkbox in the bottom, Target Sequence, is selected. And then we'll just go Open uh, for the Alpha channel. Just ignore that. We want to keep the background and then just drag this and drop it into a new composition. Here it is. And we can just quickly render this out. And that's the uh, final result. So um, it looks uh, n not not too bad for only a little bit of work. And hopefully this uh, tutorial has been able to give you the skills and the tools that you need to start creating your own animations. Um, and say that by no means did you have to do exactly what I did. I know you can make your own camera moves and build your own things and all that sort of stuff. So I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, how people... Uh, use this sort of training and um, you know creativity is the limit so uh, thanks for watching guys if nothing else hopefully you've at least developed an appreciation for how long this process takes and uh, as always please like comment and subscribe uh, if you haven't seen already have a look at some of my other animations um, but that's about all for me for now I'll see you guys next time